Hello fellow engineers and welcome to Lysara Summit Kingdom. Now this is a unique little city builder based on the side of a mountain uh, made by just a team of three people. I am impressed. So we start off just looking at this plot of land which looks pretty normal but when we turn to the side it's actually on the side of a mountain and if we zoom way out from here you'll see we're actually on a huge huge mountain uh, way way up in the clouds so to start with we need to come down here we need to build a marketplace the hub of any city but first this video is sponsored by ridge wallet gifting for dads can be hard yeah cheers cheers for that pad Appreciate that. But with Father's Day coming up, Ridge are having one of their biggest sales of the year. They're designed with RFID blocking materials, keeping you safe from digital pickpocketers. You can also get matching key cases that hold up to six keys completely silently. No more key rattle. So head to ridge.com forward slash engineer for up to 40% off through June 15th. That's ridge.com forward slash engineer. Thanks to Ridge for supporting the channel, but let's get back to today's video. So we'll wang this down. I mean, you can sort of wang it anywhere and you can look out, look at the actual building. It's like proper built into the slope. Now, but you can see we have this symbol here, which basically means we're not attached to any roads. Now the road... <laughs> The road up to our city is that. You see, literally drops down into the abyss down there. Yeah, we can use this button down here. We can say, just build a road from there. And we can say, come over to the front like that. Lovely jubbly. Now, we need some workers. You can see up here, we're missing eight people. We have eight jobs and there's, there's no one there. So all we need to do, come down to this button here, residential. And we can build houses, a lowlander's hut. Now, each one of these holds four people. So basically, if we just build them like along there i guess and then i can do some roads up here and go out that way and build a few more houses and basically each house has four people in so we're now up to 40 total there's 32 people free uh also worth noting as well there's lots of different types of houses but at the moment we're just we're just lowlanders at the base of the mountain Right, so the next thing these guys need, they need a bit of spirituality, uh, a bit of enlightenment, as it says down here. So if we click this, we can build a mandala, mandala, which basically satisfies the needs of nearby people. So basically, I think, yeah, if I shove it there, can you see that there's two houses that don't get it? So I should probably, well, I should probably just go over to the left, if I'm honest. That's a pretty nice space. So all that you can, you can actually see people, they're like bowing, bowing around the outside. That looks like a very dangerous slope, by the way. Like, is it just like a shiny marble floor? That looks dangerous, whatever it is. But anyway, with all these houses, we can click on them and see like what their needs are, whether they're getting things or not. So basically, this hut here, you can see it's got different needs. It's got food demands, it's got prosperity demands, as well as enlightenment demands. Um, then down here in this bar, they're like the, that's sort of the progress. So we've already got the mandala. The need is satisfied because we're in range of the very, the very steep, smooth slope. But they can pray that they don't fall off the edge. Yeah, but to keep filling this bar up, we need to give them some food. So we can start by coming into the food thing and we can build a chicken farm. I don't want to be a pie. Because basically this will give us eggs. And then as long as the eggs are in range of the marketplace, that can be distributed to houses. So we don't need to be right next to the houses in order for them to be fed. Because the houses are in range of the marketplace, we need to be in range of that as well. So I reckon let's build a road... Probably just over this way somewhere. And we'll wang a chicken farm right next to the marketplace. And so this is now producing eggs. But the eggs, they, they can't go anywhere. That, that little symbol, that means... Oi. You're not sending eggs anywhere, Matt. So we click on this. We can see our chickens are 100% efficient. Good job. And then we just say send to the marketplace. And look, you can see down there. As eggs are made, they're taken to the market and back. Nice. So if we go back to this house, you can see, look... They have eggs. They are satisfied, but they need they need another type of food. So down here we have a samper production, uh, which is basically a, a type of wheat you can make from barley. So if we get a barley field, I tell you what, if we build a road back here, and then shove some fields at the back like that, and shove a mill there, and then the same as before, these barley fields they need to send their crop to the mill. So we click on these. We say send over to that way. Same with this one. Oh no, I've made a grave mistake. It's not in range. It's not in range. I quite like that. Like when you join like two of the same buildings together, they sort of like merge into like a different things. So that's like the one in its own. And then when you merge it, oh, it's all merged. So I've created a mega field. You can see it's all tiered. So like it doesn't all fall away down the slope. And then in the mill, which is should be receiving barley. Yeah, but you can see by the symbol in this, it's missing yaks. You can't just run a mill without yaks. Everyone knows that, Matt. So we're going to have to get some yaks. So let's head into here. And the, 
<laughs> this cracks me up. This is in the residential buildings. We don't just have lowlanders. We have yaks. A simple yak breeding hut. Because, yeah, yaks are residents in this place. So they are in there. And because those yaks are in range of the mill, you can see the mill is now working. Which means we can click on that. And the samper, the flour we're making, we can say transport that to the marketplace and then all these houses they are ready to level up so if we click these buttons look the houses upgrade boosh 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 yeah so may as well upgrade all of them to be honest because then well then they're upgraded they now have 10 people in rather than just four so population is booming um, but you may have noticed we're sort of running out of space down here there is still some space but there's a whole new area over here i mean we can we can zoom out and look there's an entire mountain all the way around but yeah, first, let's have a look at trying to expand over to this side because it's just across this little valley. Now, as you know, valleys require bridges to get across. So this is my favorite button in the game, the bridge button. So if we just come down to this bit where the gap's a bit smaller, we can find a green spot and then we can just say, right, where do you want a bridge? Where do you want a bridge, Matt? Well, I want a bridge, I guess, to there. And then we have a bridge. We have a bridge. Yeah, but like everything else in this game, there's there's no cost. So why would you stop there? Why would you build just one bridge when you can have several? So here we go. You know what that means? We need a bridge review. A whole hope of bridges that get from one side of the mountain to the other. With their crisscross design, we are literally stitching the mountain back together. Once we add some paths to the other side, we'll then be connected to the rest of the town. Then no matter how big our town gets, we know there will always be a bridge for someone to cross. The fact this has been seamlessly built on a steep slope is really an engineering achievement. So therefore, I give this bridge an 8.5 out of 10. Bridge review. Right, so now we have this area fully connected to this area. Fully connected. Um, and this area is going to need its own marketplace. So we'll head into here. We'll say marketplace. Then I think we'll plop one down somewhere in the middle, I guess. So this side doesn't necessarily need its own residence. The, the people from this side, they will commute across all my bridges to get to work. Uh, and because city builders sort of encourage like dystopian stuff. I mean, they don't really. I just feel like I always have to go that route. But yeah, this side is going to be like the worker side, the farmers. But uh, over this side, we, we've unlocked a brand new type of house. Look, the artisan's house. So if we shove a few of these bad boys down, so I've then got eight of them there. And you can see my next task is to upgrade eight of them to level two. Now, if we click on these, you'll see artisans, they have different needs. Now, they do require food, but they, they want prosperity. So if we head into the prosperity tab, we can see we can, ooh, we can get some baths. Clean citizens are happy citizens. Yeah, where can we shove this? I reckon, yeah, up the top. That could be nice. Because then you're going to you're gonna get sweaty walking uphill going to the baths. And then you'll be nice and clean. And then you can just stroll downhill back to your house nice and clean. So that's provided that need. Then they just need the food. I think as it says over here, their demands are a bit of everything. So they need the samper, the eggs, as well as some cheese. That's it, cheese. And I assume they still need the enlightenment thing. So I'll build that and then yeah look that's added to that down there nice so prosperity and enlightenment are both fulfilled we just got to do the food now so for cheese production we have the yak shack <laughs> cozy place with the axe provides you with wool and milk requires yaks to operate and then the cheese maker which turns the milk into cheese so in order to have those we're gonna need some yaks remember so if we head into residential we can get some yak breeding on the go we should probably path this out a little bit. I reckon let's just do a straight path over that way like the Romans used to. Get a bit of yak breeding there. And then, oh, a yak shack fits behind it. Yeah, we could do that then. Add a road up the side of these. So then that's producing milk and wool. So I can choose where to send that. So first off, I need to build the cheese maker. And I think with this, I got to be in range of the milk thing as well as the marketplace because that's where we ultimately want to send it. So if I shove that there, then hopefully we can say yak shack, send your milk to that place. And then you can see as milk is produced, they're carrying the milk along there to the cheese maker. So then we can say cheese maker, send your cheese to the marketplace. And then there's a box of cheese going on its way. And then all of our artisan houses, they should have cheese. So if we click on one of these, you can see, yep, they've now got cheese. So in order to get to level two, we've just got to fill up any category. So we can either make samper or eggs. Um, and I think because eggs are the, are the easier thing to build, I think we'll just do that. So cheeky bit of egg there. We can say send that to the marketplace. And would you look at that? All these houses, they are ready to boosh. 
be upgraded. So you can see at the top, that's how many artisans we have. That's how many lowlands we have. That's how many yaks we have. There is a third bunch of people, the monks, but they're not available in this demo, sadly. But yeah, nice. So this is our artisan area. And, uh, and now we get to build my second favorite thing after a bridge. Yep, it's a shaft. Shafts obviously work vertically. So we can literally say go from there up to here. And there you go. We have our shop. Look how tall it is. <laughs> I've never seen a shaft that big. That's what she said. But yeah, it's currently not working because there's no road at the bottom. So let's just wang that in quick. So road from there up to there. And then, oh no, look, there's a yak powering it. <laughs> there's a yak in there. So I assume that allows people to get carried up and down, right? Can I shaft from over? Oh, I can. I can shaft like up there. Oh, nice. Okay, so we can literally cover this thing in shafts. Oh no, I think I crashed the game. I think I crashed the game. <laughs> I did too many shafts. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's 25 gigs of shaft going on. Ah, thank goodness for autosave. We're back in. We're back in. And we're going to keep shafting away because that is what we do here. Right, okay. This place is looking beautiful. Not going to lie. I do need to connect all these up because at the moment we're, we're disconnected. I mean, working this way seems to be okay. If we then connect that to our town, does that break... No, that's fine. That is fine. We are missing yaks, though. So each of the yaks up the top of here, they are actual yaks that I need to, like, literally have and employ. Okay, well, into residential. Let's get some yaks on the go. So, oh, we can make such a big yak farm. Look at the size of that. We got all the yaks now. So now we've got six free yaks, which means I can connect a few more of these up, I guess. Yeah, but then we're out of yaks again. That's fine. I'm going to make like a yak mega farm over this week. So yeah, the trouble with building a farm this big is that we then actually need workers. Because look, each simple yak breeding needs four workers. So we've got to build more lowlander huts. So we can build those down this edge. And because all of their demands are met, we can literally upgrade them straight away. But yeah, now all of our yak powered lifts are working, which means we can come up to this area. And we need to have an operational beekeeper in the middle zone. Okay. So first off, let's connect up all of these, all of these paths. So all of our shafts are connected together. <laughs> Look at the state of this place. The devs must be like, why do we give this guy a key? But yeah, right. We've now got the honey production tab so we can build beekeepers. They need four workers each. So we'll just shove a beekeeper thing like there. Then you can see... We can export that somewhere. Oh, oh, the sound effects of bees is horrible. Sounds like there's bees buzzing around my head. I don't like it. I don't like it. But yeah, there's no marketplace up here. And it's quite a long way down to these two places. Oh, what's what's actually, what's wrong with that? Eggs, supply not meeting demand. Don't worry, we can shove a few more egg productions down. So you send to market. But yeah, in order to move resources around a bit easier, we've just unlocked this, the warehouse. So you can see it's a storage building and allows for transport and resources on long distances. So basically, I think every one of these you have, they sort of, they share resources. So if I put one in every area that we've got, uh, we should be good. So we've got warehouse there. I'm going to shove another one down this way and another one over here. This is our first starting area. Right, and then this honey from the beekeeper, I'm going to say send to that warehouse. So what the hell are they outside the front? Are they the waving crazy flappy arm man? or so whatever they're called. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. But yeah, essentially we can then come into the warehouse and we can say send your honey down to this marketplace. And you can see there, no carriers are assigned to the route. So we can just add some carriers. And as long as we make sure the outcome is slightly lower than the income, then it means it will be storing honey. Uh, but generally, it's going to be coming down to the marketplace. Nice. So now if we click on these artisan houses, look, they have honey. Their need is satisfied. So we can then come back up here. We can do the same because we can say send down to this marketplace as well. Add some carriers to that. And then I am just going to add another beehive just so we've got enough honey being made. All right, sorted. We've got 10 going in. we got minus 6.8 going out. I'll do that up to minus 9. Decent. Okay, everyone has honey everyone is happy i want to level these up to like level three or even more if we can so what can we do next oh mines mines start copper utensil production oh look there's copper oh what is what is around this side what have we got minerals Ooh. right okay this will satisfy the prosperity need because we can we can get some copper mines going and then turn that into copper utensils how does this work? So we build a copper mine on there. So wherever we build... Oh, look at the little rope cable like, moving. 
We're going to mine all of these, I think. So we're going to need a road up to those. So they're all connected. We are. We're missing some lowlanders. Hang on a second. Right, there you go. Just built some new houses so we have enough people now. So we then want to send those to this. The copper utensil maker. So I assume this probably needs to be in range of its own warehouse. And then that can be sent to wherever. So let's shove that there. Then link all of these so the copper gets sent to that. So then we need our warehouse, which we can then send these goods into. And then ship copper utensils down to that marketplace and down to that marketplace. Oh, and it's the artisans that are the carriers. Okay, so we may need some more artisan houses. So we'll just shove those over this side. Upgrade them all. Boosh, 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 boosh. Right, nice. Now all the copper utensils being made are going away. Oh, look at these. You can see like the baskets of copper coming down. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, I'm loving this. All right, so these artisan houses, they're nearly ready to be leveled up. You can see they've got the copper utensils. They got the baths. Same with these lowlander huts. That just needs a bit of a bit of anything to, uh, to do that. I mean, we could get them some cheese, to be honest. But uh, another big one is textiles. So we need yak shacks, which we have over this way, and that will give us wool we can send to the weaver. So let's build a weaver over this way. But essentially, these two yak shacks will say, send the wool up to there. And then from the weaver thing, we send that to the warehouse. Oh, it's not a range. Okay, we'll build a warehouse across the road up there. Send it to there instead. And then in the warehouse, we can send that to the two marketplaces. Add some carriers to both. And they'll go to each of those. And yes, look, we are ready to level up to level three. So boosh, boosh. Oh man, look at those houses. Uh, the trouble is, as we upgrade, look, demands are even higher. So now there's not enough. Well, there's not enough anything. We need more cheese, more honey, more copper utensils. So we'll make some more cheese, some more honey, some more utensils. And then have them all sent to their own warehouse. And then just up the number of people. So the income matches the outcome. And then they're all leveled up and they need, oh, they need more stuff to get to the next level. And then look, they all want to upgrade. So let's upgrade them. Boosh, boosh, boosh. And great job. You have successfully built a thriving mountain settlement. As our last thing in this demo, let's take a very quick look at avalanches. Oh no. One way of dealing with them is to trigger them preemptively before they get too powerful. Yeah, that's true. That's what they do in real life. Um, oh, it's gone. It's gone all dark and snowy, actually. Oh, wow. Look, everything's covered in snow. Man, I would not want to live on this place like covered in snow and ice. It's so sketchy. Right, anyway, we've got we to gotta build up here. We've got this star thing, an avalanche inducer. Oh, so this, oh, look, it's actually like a massive tube, like a big old horn, which is pretty much what they do in real life. They have like big old, like, or, like really loud, like explosions and like tubes that like echo and, oh, so they set off like snow avalanches. So that's cool. Connect that up and then... Once we build and upgrade a few more artisan houses, we should be good to zoom out, head to the top of the mountain. <laughs> Look at this place. And then we can press trigger an avalanche. So the horn has gone off. Oh, there it goes. Oh, man. Avalanche. Oh, no. Is my thing okay? Look how white it's making everything. Oh, did that just ruin my... That may have just ruined my city. Anyway, that is the demo complete. Oh, look in the middle. It looks like there's like avalanche wall protection and stuff. But yeah, what an amazing little game that is. Really enjoyed that. If you guys liked it yourself, be sure to wishlist it on Steam. But yeah, for now, I'll say peace, love, and mountains. Bye, guys.